Okay, now we're on video number nine. This is the first of two in-depth grammar videos on the writing section, or I should say in-depth writing videos, one grammar and one essay. And this is obviously our essay video, and it is, the essay is much uh, dreaded. People don't look forward to doing it. They think it's going to be awful. Um, but I'm going to hopefully show you in this video that, number one, it's relatively easy. It's easier than you might expect. And two, towards the end, we'll talk about how, well, you know, maybe it doesn't matter as much as you might think. Uh, so let's go over first to talk about the instructions to, uh, to the section. So read them this time, so hopefully we don't have to read them again. Now you're always going to do this essay first in section one, so whenever you open the SAT and start, this is the first thing you're going to see. The essay gives you an opportunity to show how effectively you can develop and express ideas. You should, therefore, take care to develop your point of view, present your ideas logically and clearly, and use language precisely. So this is the important part here, right? This is the thing that they're going to be testing you about. So if you do this well, you'll get a high score. Your essay must be written on the lines provided on your answer sheet. You will receive no other paper on which to write. Okay? You will have enough space if you write on every line, avoid wide margins, and keep your handwriting to a reasonable size. Remember that people who are not familiar with your handwriting will read what you write. Try to write or print so that your writing is legible to those readers. So this is very important. While uh, you may not get totally disqualified, they may work through it, uh, work through your messy writing if you've got illegible writing to get to you know what you've written. It's not a good thing, as you'll see, because first impressions, as we'll talk about, matter so much. You don't want to put your reader in a bad mood if you, your handwriting is hard to read. So just keep that in mind. I know you want to rush and, and get through it quickly because you have only 25 minutes, but you need to have a balance between speed and legibility. Important reminders. A pencil is required for this essay. So a pencil, no pens, please. If you get a pen, if you use a pen, you'll get a zero. Do not write your essay in your test book. You will receive credit only for what you write on your answer sheet. An off-topic essay will receive a score of zero. If your essay does not reflect your original, individual work, original and individual work, your test scores may be canceled. Okay. And then finally, you got 25 minutes. Now, this is the most important part of the section. This is essentially the question you have to respond to. Now, there are two parts. This is the excerpt. And this is awfully, often just a quote from somebody related to this topic. This is actually not as important really not important at all compared to the assignment. You technically don't even have to read this. Now, I don't say don't, I'm not telling you not to, but this is not something you should worry about. You don't have to necessarily respond to this in your essay in any way. It's just kind of flavor text. Uh, so in this case, we're not going to read it. It's just about James Watson, blah, 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 blah. So this doesn't matter as much. What really matters is the assignment, and this is the question you have to answer. So this is what you need to respond to right here. Do people accomplish more when they are allowed to do things in their own way? So this is the assignment. This is what we need to directly respond to in our essay. It's always this first sentence. And the next part's always the same. Plan and write an essay in which you develop your point of view on this issue. Support your position with reasoning and examples taken from your reading, studies, experience, or observations. All right, so that is what we have to talk about, the assignment. The rest of it is just kind of superfluous stuff. This is the key. So before we move on to some specific tips, let's remember how it's graded. So remember it's graded from 0 to 6, and there are two graders. But what I didn't really tell you is, well, how do they actually, you know, how do the graders sit down and actually grade your essay? Now, it's not like how you're used to when you write essays in school for English or history or whatever. Your teacher usually spends, you know, 10 or 15 minutes going over each essay in detail, kind of marking the errors you make, responding to you, all that stuff. Or at least they should be if they're a good teacher. But... On the SAT, you're not going to expect that. They're going to have two to three minutes to read through your essay, figure out what it should score, and slap a number on it. That's about it. So the way they approach grading it is called holistic grading. That means they don't go into the detail. They don't mark up your paper. They don't look for little specific tiny details. They look for how does the paper work as a whole, a.k.a. holistically. How does it work as a piece of writing overall? So what they do is they read the paper, they get a general impression of what the score should be, they put the, z the number on it, 0 to 6, and then they move on. That's it. That's why for our purposes, as I mentioned above, first impressions are so key. Because frankly, it's not even first impressions, it's only impressions. They're going to read it once through and slap a number on it. So you have to be sure to impress them the first way, the first time through the essay. That's why these five tips that follow are all going to be a little bit more specific about how to create really good first impression so that you maximize the score that you can get. So the first general tip is going to be write as much as possible. 
an MIT professor did a study and showed that the amount you write correlates to your score uh, in a direct way. So in other words, if you write a lot, you'll generally score higher than if you write a little. And this makes sense, right? Think of first impressions. If you open a test booklet, right, and there are two pages of lines that you can write on for the test, and you see the first page is barely filled out of two, that's going to send a different signal to you if you're a grader than if you know the entire essay booklet is filled with writing. So that's why we want to say write as much as possible because you want to show off that first impression that you know what you're talking about and you've got a lot to say about the issue. The second uh, tip here is pick a side, pick a side and argue it strongly. So you'll note that in our assignment, which is right here, do people accomplish more when they are allowed to do things in their own way? It's a yes or no question essentially. And all the questions are essentially going to be yes or no questions or on that order, agree or disagree questions. So when we say pick a side, we mean either agree with the prompt, so either agree with the prompt or disagree, and be very clear about which side you, you're arguing. The other key here is don't waffle. So don't, don't waffle. What I mean by that is, now normally good writing and writing in the real world is going to show the grays of issues, right? They're going to show why one side is right and why the other side is right and the balance between these two sides and the arguments between them. But in this essay, we do not want to show that. We simply want to show the black and white of the issue. What that means is when you pick your side, when you choose to agree or disagree, you have to argue that side solely. Don't try to show the other side as a way to kind of balance your essay. That is not good. Uh, the essay, remember, first impressions, the reader will read your essay and say, oh, they're not going to say, oh, this person's showing a well-balanced view. They're going to say, oh, this person doesn't know what he or she is talking about because they're kind of trying to show both sides. That's why you want to pick one side and argue it as strongly as you can. Don't try to give any ground to the side that you don't pick. Now, again, when you pick a side, there's no one right answer to the question. So you could pick either agree or disagree. It doesn't matter. As long as you've got the evidence to support the side, that's what counts. But whatever side you pick, again, don't waffle. Don't try to show both sides of the issue. Pick one side, argue it, and almost ignore the other side. Number three is going to be use examples. And this is probably the most important one here because if you don't have examples to fill out the essay, you're not going to be able to write a lot. You're not going to be able to support your side. So really it's all about using good examples to support your side. Support your side. Now, what do I mean by examples to support your side? Well, first you have to say, let's go with this question and let's pick a side here. Do people accomplish more when they're allowed to do things in their own way? I'm going to say, hmm, accomplish more when they're allowed to do things in their own way. I'm going to disagree. Okay, you could agree for the purposes of this illustrating this, can't write, illustrating this uh, number three here, I'm going to disagree. So I've picked my side, I'm going to disagree. So now I want to pick examples that will help me support my position. So I do not believe then. I want to show examples that show that people accomplish more when they don't do things their own way, when they kind of follow what everybody else is doing. So disagreeing, let's see. We could pick stuff from history, of course, and literature. Those are kind of the two gold standard, and those are the ones you might expect as the most important ones here. So let's think, history. Um, can I think of things in history? Well, sure. Um, let's see. Civil War, maybe? Or any war? The idea that in order to for someone to win a war, you've got to follow orders in some sense, right? You've got to be able to follow the commands, otherwise everyone will be doing things for themselves and it'll be chaos. Uh, and of course, you can come up with a ton more examples here. Literature. Um, it's going to be hard for me to come up with something at the top of my head with literature. Um, I can't really come off anything off the top of my head, so I'm going to move on. But you could probably think there's a lot of literature examples that you can come up with to support yourself here. Now, you're not just limited to history and literature, and this is the important part. Of course, you can use other school subjects like science, uh, psychology, anything your taste, take law, anything you're taking in school works here as well. Um, so science, I might use an example of the scientific method. Now, they use science as an example of agreeing in this prompt in that box up there, but 
I'm going to use it as an example where we have to agree. You have to follow a certain method, a certain order, in order to get something done. You can't just do whatever it is you want and use whatever standards of evidence you want, or otherwise no one will believe you and you won't get anything done. So you've got to follow the scientific method. Uh, you can use things outside of school, though. You can use pop culture. So TV, movies, radio, uh, internet stuff. You can use your hobbies. You can use sports. I think sports would be a great example here, right? Sports is an example of if you don't follow what your coach says, if you just go off and do whatever it is you want, if you want to go for your individual stats, you don't follow the team concept, uh, your team's not going to do well, you're not going to do well. So sports, I think, is a great example here. So hobbies work. Sports works. And then also, as the, as the assignment says, you can use your own personal experiences and observations. And this is really wide open, right? Um, you can probably think of some examples where uh, going off on your own wasn't so profitable that you had to kind of follow the advice of somebody else. So, you know, mentors might be, if you have any mentors, that might be an example, parents. You know, doing what, they, and this is kind of an example, of, you know, doing what they say was a good thing because they had more wisdom. So following people with wisdom, that could be uh, an example here. So you can imagine you can come up with a lot of personal experiences and observations uh, to help yourself out. So, you want to pick around two to three solid examples. Uh, make sure you can write a lot about them. Make sure they support your example. And then you're going to weave them into your essay to support what you said above. Now, what I did here, this is what I would do on test day if I were you. I would spend two to five minutes just writing down all the examples you could possibly come up with from many different areas. And then go ahead and pick the three that work best. Uh, if you can't decide whether to agree or disagree, maybe list out both sides. List out examples from your disagree side, list out examples from the agree side, and pick then pick the side that you have better examples for. All right, uh, anything else I need to say about this? One thing about personal examples, they're not going to call your parents and check up on your personal examples. So I don't want to say outright to lie and make up examples, but just realize that you have wiggle room here when it comes to the facts. Um, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I don't want to go any further with that. Number four, this is just a kind of a general idea. Use big words. This is about kind of style. Vary sentences. Use different sentence structures, different sentence lengths. Use transition sentences. So make sure the paragraphs flow between, e between each other. Uh, an example of kind of where you could profit from the kind of essay here is you can use the word I. Use I. Please use I. Please use it. In fact, your first... E I've seen essays get sixes that have as their first uh, sentence of the essay, I argue that blah, and there's their thesis, right? There's the argument they're trying to support. That is so clear. But think of first impressions. If the reader reads that, they know what you're arguing. They know that you know what you're doing. They know that you know what you're going to be writing about. And that's just a great way to start out your essay. I would avoid, for instance, if you're talking about sentence structure here, uh, and this kind of goes into number five, you can use this, the standard intro, body, 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 and the third one optional, obviously, if you're only using two examples. Intro, body, 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 conclusion. That is totally okay. Don't have to get any fancier than that. A six essay can use this, no problem. Now, for your intro, this is what I was mentioning before. You kind of want to avoid what I call the kind of hallmark intros the Hallmark card intros, and that's kind of where you have this fluffy intro sentence of all people in society. Society is built on the fact that people, blah, 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 if people, that kind of stuff. Same kind of thing in the conclusion. You kind of have the Hallmark card conclusion. Uh, stuff like, if people in this world can only follow this, then the world would be a better place. Blah, 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 blah. This general, fluffy, weird stuff. Avoid that. Just go right into it. Go right into your argument. Right? So again, start with, I are, in this essay, I argue that, blah. That is totally okay and better than the kind of hallmark, fluffy intros that we have so much trouble. Also, if you know you're starting with this, you don't have to spend two or five minutes worrying about how to start the essay. It's one of the hardest things. You can just go right into it. For your bodies, again, have your transition sentences and always try to work them back to your thesis to show why the bodies support whatever it is you're writing here. And then finally, the conclusion. Make sure you have a conclusion, even if it's one sentence or two sentences. And essentially, you can just reiterate what you've said above. You don't have to be all hallmark. You just restate what you've said, sum up what you've written, and then go from there. Finally, doesn't matter. Um, this is essentially what I mentioned, started, mentioned at the beginning of this video, and also what I mentioned in video 8. Does the essay matter? Not really. So that's why, first off, it's kind of formulaic. 
as you can see, there's not much creativity here. A six essay does not is not necessarily going to be a great work of literature. In fact, it's most likely not going to be. Uh, and then beyond that, if again, like I mentioned in video eight, if they want to see your writing, they'll look for a writing sample or an admissions essay. Uh, so I wouldn't really worry about this as much. Um, if you're going to spend, again, like I mentioned in eight, if you're going to only spend a little bit amount, little bit amount of time on SAT, I'd work on the reading, I'd work on the math. I'd even work on grammar questions before the essay, just because, frankly, um, this just doesn't matter as much compared to the other rest, to the other uh, other uh, sides of the story, other sections of the test. So that's my take on it. But of course, your mileage may vary. If you like this video and you want to see more, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you like more information on the SAT or more tips, more advice, please check out my website, reasonprep.com. Uh, next is the last video, which is going to be on the grammar, multiple choice questions, and the grammar rules.